When I was a kid, the U.S. was a true superpower, you know. We used to see American license plates and speed up to see what the drivers looked like because they were American. What? Yeah. I'd be like, oh my gosh, they're from America. Let's see what they look like. <laughs> like they're from America, even though we lived so close. Um, but then uh, Bush became your president, I think. And it started to become a little less appealing. And Canada started to grow a little bit more pride. Known each other since 2014. Wow, or seven seven years. I think so. Yeah. Um, at least at least must yeah. be more actually because how long we've we been married? We've only been married four or five years. Yeah. And we were engaged for one year. I should know how long we've been married. It must be eight and years at least. Up on five. Yeah. And then yeah, we were engaged for one year. We dated for three years. Yeah. So yeah, I've known you for a long time. And when I first met you, you were living in Seattle. Mhm. Mm but you have lived a lot of different places, right? Yes. And you've spent a lot of time traveling. Um, but I was wondering if you could kind of start from the beginning and um, talk just a little bit about where you grew up and what that was like. Yeah. I was born in Edmonton, Alberta, pretty far north. Um, lived there until I was seven <clears throat> and had a few houses there, like lived in a few houses. Was with my mom and dad until they divorced when I was three and then solo with mom and brother for a small moment until I got an evil stepfather. <laughs> and then we um, left Edmonton for Kelowna, British Columbia, which is southern BC on the eastern side, like two hours from the U.S. border, mm -hmm. in like a valley, ski, water, town. Mm -hmm. Mostly did that. Cool. What was that like growing up like near the 
U.S. border? Like, is that, did that have any influence on why you eventually came to the U.S.? Not at all. I think, you know, like 70% or so, don't quote me on this, but it's something close to 70% of Canadians live within 100 miles of the U.S. border because it gets really cold as you get far north and it's just less inhabitable. You know, we have the whole Yukon area that is hardly um, inhabited by human beings, but it's massive. <clears throat> but when I was a kid, the U.S. was a true superpower, you know. We used to see American license plates and speed up to see what the drivers looked like because they were American. What? Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, oh my gosh, they're from America. Let's see what they look like. <laughs> and you expect them to be like really good looking or really bad looking? Yeah, who knows, right? <laughs> I don't even think we really knew. We were just like, they're from America, even though we lived so close. Um, but then... Bush became your president, I think, and it started to become a little less appealing, and Canada started to grow a little bit more pride um, in, you know, maybe like our socialist health care and just certain benefits of living there outside of the fact that we just don't have an option to live somewhere that has warm climate 12 months out of the year. Uh, you just like pick and choose what works and mm -hmm. they've gotten a lot more better at being proud of being Canadian mm -hmm. but I ended up in the States and it was sort of this novelty I moved down I went to Bible college when I was 19 I lasted six weeks and dropped out and then I <laughs> married an American and I think still a little bit to some people, they're like, wow, she moved to America. Like, She's lived in the States for her whole adult life. Because um, there's so much to choose from city-wise here, and there's so many different accents than what we have in Canada. And, you know, in Canada, we have like a handful of big cities. Mm -hmm. If you're a big city person, you have just so little to choose from. But you mm -hmm. come to the States and there's like, endless places to live mm -hmm. for a different scenery, different culture, but it's all still, you're just like, oh, it's just a, another country that has its own problems like mm -hmm. every other place. Yeah. Uh, is that sense of like the ability to like, like choose between all the different cities, does that have anything to do with why you've traveled so much or seen like been drawn to being in so many different cities because you've been in seattle you've been in l.a nashville in portland portland uh -huh. spokane uh-huh yeah i think i think to a degree but i also got married really young and had a business of my own and bought a house really young when a bunch of my other friends were traveling the world and or going to university in a different city or province and having these, you know, really interesting life experiences, meeting people. And mm -hmm. um, I was in a pretty isolated, like not isolated, and I was a hairdresser, so I had a lot of people in my chair with great stories that I felt like I could glean off of. But I, I was like, whoa, I've been building a life in this one city for all of this time there's so much more out there and then I was changing careers and I think I just went where I had opportunity really so you're in Portland now yeah but you've only been here for a few months mm -hmm. or since December we decided yeah we'll go with December um What's that been like? It's been good, I think. It's, yeah. I really like Portland. Mm -hmm. I think it's such a good harmony between having big city elements and accessibility, but also kind of a small, chill environment. You can walk places, it takes 20 minutes to get anywhere. The airport's really mellow. Uh, there's a lot of passion in this city for causes of all kinds. Mm -hmm. And I do feel like it's pretty multicultural from my experience. I know that a lot of people would disagree, but mm -hmm. uh, it's also just been a time of like 
somewhat isolation. I think having a partner for the first time in a really long time mm. made a difference in at least having somebody consistent around that could, you could, you know, go for walks and whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but I also sleep a lot, so most places don't feel too different. <laughs> I have kind of the same MO wherever I live. I'm like in bed and sometimes at the movies or mm -hmm. at a concert, which weren't happening this mm -hmm. last year. So it was just like yeah, being in bed. What did you do? Because you have a tradition where on holidays, especially Christmas, I think, you go watch movies, right? You yeah. weren't able to do that. First year, this would have been my 11th or 12th year doing that. The mm. two movies, Christmas Eve and like three to five on Christmas day. And we watched movies at home. Mm -hmm. I just was, I tried not to think too hard about it and was sort of yeah. like, this is privilege at its finest where you're like, <laughs> I can't be a brat about not getting to see all these movies in the theater this year. Yeah. Uh, like I'm healthy. I have a roof over my head, mm -hmm. try to be, not fixate on like this fucked up all of my years of <laughs> tradition uh i was like okay it's a reset yeah um cool yeah well unless you have more that you want to say about portland i'm sure that there's a lot more that you could say um i was wondering where do you where would you like to see yourself in the near future that is a great cue i really am pining for a remote job mm -hmm. because in my heart of hearts I think I would like to have maybe Portland as a home base it's a little bit more affordable but I would love to go back to Canada for a few months and mm -hmm. feel like like live in Montreal and mm -hmm. learn French again and just feel like what it's like to be a Canadian because mm -hmm. I have this pride about being Canadian but I've lived in America half my life mm -hmm. and the adult years where you're more informed and able to participate are the years I haven't been there <clears throat> so I'm like would it resonate with me would I mm -hmm. would I feel still so Canadian or how would that change but I've been told with I deal with disassociative disorder mm -hmm. and I've been told that I need to create a home which will help me kind of get back into my body and living less in this dreamlike state all the time. Mm. So I probably would be better off for the next like couple of years staying put somewhere. Mm -hmm. I just don't love the idea of that. Yeah, that's interesting. So your dream is kind of opposed to like your maybe your mental health goals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm like, hmm, there's got to be a split in the middle. Yeah. Maybe it just means that it will take longer for my mental health to get. Mm -hmm. Like, what can I actively be doing to support that while still not feeling like a, like a, a prisoner mm -hmm. almost. But either way, I guess I'd be feeling like a prisoner. Hmm. If you don't work on the mental health thing, you're a prisoner to the disassociative disorder. Yeah. And if you do work on it, you feel like you're a prisoner to like being stuck in one place. Mm -hmm. Hmm. But maybe I would learn to love that. I don't know. Yeah. Um, it's an, I, I feel like other people I've talked to, um, like they've all talked in some way about the feeling or the fear of being stuck in some place, which mm -hmm. I think is really interesting. I never realized it was something that was on so many people's minds. So it's interesting to hear you talk about that. I mean, you lived your whole life basically in the same yeah. area and that's never been something you, and now mm -hmm. you're in a career where mm -hmm. you're like, you go to a building, you invest in these lives, and you see them mm -hmm. through. For, there's got to be a sense of responsibility yeah. there, but you don't have that. No, I'm very comfortable just being with the idea of being a teacher in Seattle for a very, very long time. Yeah. Um, I don't. I wonder why that is. Um, Even after going to Japan and stuff, you're not like, wow, I really want to be 
all these other places. Which I'm not saying this yeah, is, yeah. that's a bad thing. I think it's actually a really beautiful thing yeah. that you're like, I'll do this when mm-hmm. I can and when I want to, but I really am happy yeah. with where I'm at. Yeah, I love visiting and traveling, um, but I also, I really love Seattle and I think I have so much nostalgia associated with it. Um, like I just associate all like my positive childhood memories with that city. Yeah. And so the idea of not, not calling that place home, is pretty hard to think about for me. Yeah. Um, but I have fantasized about like living in New York city or something like that. Um, but it would probably only ever be like short term. Like a sabbatical situation or something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's great though. Yeah. Well, thanks for doing this with me. It's really nice to learn a little bit more about you. Thank you. Yeah.